The past year has required us as a government and a party to continue to concentrate our energies on stabilizing Barbados. In this regard, at the outset, I want to thank all of our members and stalwarts for their unwavering support in these difficult times. This 81st annual conference of our great party finds us fulfilling our now custom role as rescuers of the people of Barbados and our country from the direst circumstances. We had to do it in 1976 under Tom Adams. We got Barbadians back to work again and built most of the modern infrastructure this country enjoys today. In that era, era to we passed legislation that propelled the credit union movement, the offshore business, and the solar water industry to be the powerhouse sectors they are today. Further, we enfranchised women, giving them rights in the law they never had before. And we ensured those living in tenantries had the right to own the land they lived on at peppercorn rates. In 1994, we had to do it once again. Then we not only put Barbadians back to work, but passed a legislation that ensured no other government could cut civil servant salaries again. Our time in office saw the largest building boom in this country's history and the highest level of employment ever recorded. Now in 2019, we are righting the wrongs of the failed policies of the Democratic Labour Party once again. While they and their temporary leader and a few dozen misguided supporters have the temerity to hold press conferences every week and to spread propaganda and lies on social media and act as though they have no responsibility for the economic morass they created and left. However, comrades, we can all take some measure of pride in the work that our team, led by Prime Minister Mia Motley, has accomplished to date. As the government wrestles with the economic challenges, which are still with us, as well as the resulting social outfall, we recognize the sacrifices of all Barbadians. As a government, we know that for some of you, life has become a bit more difficult in the last year. This is not what we wanted. But in order to get the country back on a sure footing, the spending spree that almost bankrupted this country and had our dollar on the verge of devaluation had to stop. So the difficult times that some Barbadians are facing today is in fact due to the incompetence and wastefulness of the Dems. Don't let them try to tell you otherwise. That is why we urge you to stay the course, for great will be your reward in the months and years ahead. Of course, the party is mindful that many of you would have contributed immensely to the historic 2018 victory, and indeed stayed the course with us throughout the years. We know that some of you are among those who are where we would wish you would not be. I assure you, however, that as long as I am General Secretary, your work and worth will not be forgotten. In this context, I want to salute all in our party who in trying times still made it possible for us to donate 20,000 to our CARICOM brothers and sisters in the Bahamas after the desolation inflicted on them by Hurricane Dorian. Part of the difficulty in which Barbados was plunged by the uncaring, no propagandist Dems is that we as a government are now required to evolve and pivot the country in new directions, to transform it even as we reinforce our basic principles and protect our foundations, both economic and social, within the context of these times. Comrades, the same applies to our beloved party. We must maintain and cherish our founding principles. We must engage and support our members while continuing to attract and embrace new members, as we did recently in St. Michael West. We must review 
we must refresh and modernize our party structures. In a sense, the party is transitioning just as the government and Barbados are transitioning. It is the only way we will not just survive, but thrive and continue to be the preeminent political organization in the region, serving Barbados with unrivaled distinction for another 81 years and more. One of the most exciting aspects of the past few years was the involvement of dozens of young people at both the constituency and national levels who volunteered in all areas to bring change to Barbados. The harnessing of this immense talent is essential to the future of our party and Barbados. And I am happy to report that for the first time since it became an arm of the party, the League of Young Socialists is in the process of some restructuring to make it more dynamic, effective, and relevant to the current and anticipated needs of this party. In keeping with our vision of developing Barbadians with a worldview, five of our younger members traveled to China last year and two recently returned from an intense diplomatic course there. In a few weeks, I expect that some more will be going off to China. The Women's League has also become more active with its very successful fundraising, tea party, and its new community outreach program, which we welcome. I want to wish I want to wish, I wish to urge all MPs and those who hold political office and position in branches to keep faith with those who have brought us to where we are and involve them, take their cause and help them. Let us not be like the prodigal son and waste our legacy and recent inheritance by disregarding our membership. That would be as great a tragedy as our victory was spectacular. We must also not be lulled into complacency by the strength of our numbers. The enemy is on the attack. And one of the downsides of social media is that it allows lies to get an easy foothold. Barbarians should never be allowed to forget the damage done by the Dems. And the Dems must be called out whenever they come as those suffering a loss of memory. And this must be done by our party machinery as to show them to be the charlatans they are. In that vein, I urge you to write letters to the editor, respond to their nonsense on social media, and call the radio calling programs. Make your voices heard. Let, your, let the people know how this party, your party, saved this country when it was going through its worst of times, not once, not twice, but now three times. Most of all, we must highlight our successes. We still have a way to go, to pull Barbados out of the hole the Dems dropped us into, but we are getting there. This BLP government is delivering and has brought a new sense of purpose and regard to our country. Others are hailing what we have achieved in 16 months. We also must do so. This conference will continue the new openness of our government as chairpersons of major institutions that impact Barbadians daily and some of our overseas representatives speak about their work over the last year. Comrades, let us recommit to supporting each other, to vibrant branches, to working together to continue to bring about a refreshing change. Let us be clear in vision, thoughts and actions that this change is change that is resolute and well-defined change and not change where things in fact remain the same. We know a strong Barbados Labour Party means a better Barbados. Let us move on, and I wish you all a memorable 81st Annual General Conference. I thank you. Well done, comrade, well done. You find, you know, I feel like election time almost again. You know, I heard people saying that the Labour Party cannot mobilize people and the Labour Party has gone quiet. But I attended a nomination in St. Michael West just the other day. And if there are rumors that this Labour Party can mobilize people, they obviously haven't met Chris Gibbs. 
I feel you have to stand, my friend, and take a bow. This is the newest candidate in the Barbados Labour Party. A good man. You all will hear more from him tomorrow while he addresses the party for the first time as the official candidate for the Barbados Labour Party in the constituency of St. Michael West. Thank you very much, comrade. Hey, to you, comrade is my favorite word. So can I have someone adopt the General Secretary's report, please? Comrade, state your name, please, for the record. John, the honor, comrade Jonathan Kamabach. And, oh, Duncan. Oh, Duncan. That's my boy. Sorry, I could barely see these days. Comrade Duncan Kamabach, state your name, sir. And comrade Andrew Williams from St. James Central. Thank you. We now move on to the report from the Women's League. May I ask Comrade Rosemary Leon to deliver her report, please? Please welcome Comrade Rosemary Leon. Good morning, comrades. Good morning. I must admit that um, during the, the shout outs earlier, you sound a bit better than last year. Last year when, when it was announced, the Women's League, we, we get kind of lukewarm. Now it getting a bit hyper. So the next time when the MC, when the chairman um, announces Women's League, all ladies please respond. Please keep enough, 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 enough noise. Okay? All right, so now this is my report. On behalf of the executive and members of the league, I extend greetings to our political leader, party chairman, general secretary, and the general body of the party as we meet to celebrate and deliberate at our 81st annual conference. Um, I'm now gonna give us a, a, a little touch of what we would have done through this past year. We. One of our major events for this year, we held a tea party. And in case, before you start to say women tea party, let me give you the background behind this tea party. The executive met and we wanted to come up with a project that would be very effective. And when I tell you about this, you're gonna find out, you're gonna realize what? We met and somebody came with a brilliant idea, let's do a tea party. Let's call it Tea for Tuition. And this tuition is for the government industrial school, the ladies at Bar Barrows in St. Mm -hmm. Lucie. So, this year in review would most certainly be considered as a successful year for the league as part of the celebrations for International Women's Day, the Finance and Fundraising Committee embarked on an activity entitled Tea for Tuition, which is a tea party type event combined with an afternoon of entertainment, which was held at Elara Court. This initiative was an effort made by the Women's League to raise funds for a home economic space for young ladies at a government industrial school at Barrows, St. Lucie. They actually now do not have a home economic room. The event, which was well attended, afforded us an opportunity to raise funds, much needed funds, to advance the cause of these young ladies. We actually were able to raise over $10,000 in that one event. We have subsequently met with the PS in the Ministry of Home Affairs and so that we can advance this. We met with the PS, they, they are very aware of what our plans, they are totally on board. So next, by, by February um, 14th next year, we would be able to, to concretize things. We are actually planning another tea for tuition tea party 
so that we can raise some more funds to go towards this project. In addition to this, we have plans of trying to get these young ladies certified. Home economics, we would like to get them certified, perhaps through, through, um, through Christchurch, the, the, um, the Marine, the Marine, um, Paul Marine, right. So, so these are the kind of plans that we have. In addition to that, we are considering one of us, somebody, somebody from the league, or we organize something where we can go there and teach them life skills. We can go there, we can, we can teach them how to make garments, that sort of thing, so that when they leave there, they have something that they could be self-sufficient. In addition to that, we were invited to do, having, having gone through the Tea Party, we were invited by the national, um, the NCF, to host a similar type tea, um, tea stall for the opening of Crop Over. This tea stall we entitled Bajan Teas. We had, um, we had, we had something like, like bay leaf tea. And I couldn't imagine drinking tea, I'm not a tea person, I couldn't imagine drinking tea at 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But this, this bay leaf tea was a hit with the tourists. They drank it and drank it and drank it. So we, that was a hit for um, a part one of a, another of our fundraising activities which would go towards the uh, same tuition. We were also able to organize a back to school assistance program where we, we funded um, we funded six primary school children, three from St. We wanted to do like touch north, south, east. So we did St. Lucie, St. Philip North, and City of Bridgetown, where we, would, we, we gave them a full school outfit, full um, tunic, blouse, shoes, socks. In some cases, they got backpacks, they got books and everything. The, and I'll move on now to our hopes. The league intends to make the Tea for Tuition Tea Party an annual event in the hope that it can quickly become a household name in Barbados. Funds raised will go towards assisting the less fortunate and vulnerable. Moving into 2020, the league intends to incorporate its meetings with those of the branches every other month by visiting and participating in activities as a way to lend support, thereby strengthening party ties. So somebody from us, our secretary is gonna be contacting the branches and organizing meetings. We are gonna to come to your branch and support your meetings. In conclusion, I take this opportunity to thank my 2018-2019 executive for their hard work and dedication to the league. However, there is still a lot of work to be done. The work never stops. I look forward to working with the new executive as we strive to create a better life for our people. With best wishes for a successful 81st Annual Conference. I thank you. Thank you, Comrade Leon. You know, concerning that was the Women's League report. Who was here last night? Anyone? Did y'all hear Comrade Roshana Trim? The young lady who gave, what y'all thought of that? If y'all thought it was good, give her a round of applause too. I believe she's here somewhere. She did a fantastic job. I need a mover and a shaker. I someone to move and to someone a second. Can I have someone to move? Say your name for the record. Miss Husbands? Crostella Husbands. I know it was Miss Husbands. <laughs> Women's League. I might... Stay around. Say your name for the record, Sylvie. So, so I might, darling, for St. Michael South, Sylvie Cummins. 
to second. Thank you very much. So moved. We now move on to the report from the League of Young Socialists. Comrade Damien Sands and Comrade Sands also received an award for last night, so he deserves a round of applause. Comrade Sands, please report to the body. Good morning, comrades. After the Barbados Labour Party won the general elections, our government introduced the Barbados Economic Recovery and Transformation Program, also known as the also known as the BERT program. This program was designed to resuscitate and transform the Barbadian economy through imp the implementation of austere and stimulus packages. After the program was launched, it became apparent that a deliberate attempt was being made by persons to disseminate false or misleading information about the program, which resulted in mass confusion. In that vein, the Executive of the League of Young Socialists thought that it was prudent to bring all of the persons involved in the creation, development, and execution of the plan into one room so that they could address and explain the program and its ultimate objectives in a simplified manner that our young people could understand it and appreciate the purpose. As a result, this executive organized a panel discussion which included, amongst other persons, Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Comrade Ryan Strong, and Minister in the Ministry of Econ Economic Affairs and Investment, Comrade Marsha Cattle. The panel discussion was a success. Panelists engaged the audience and even provided additional information to ensure that the audience and our members were thoroughly educated on the program and understood the objectives and the potential impact. During the celebration of our 52nd anniversary of independence, the Executive of the League of Young Socialists created a video collage which showcased our young people wishing Barbados a happy independence and expressing what independence they meant to them. The video was a major hit among our young people and it went viral on social media. It was shared on their social media profiles and inspired other young people not actively engaged with the party to also join in and post their videos expressing their, expressing their best wishes for Barbados. As part of our community outreach program, the executive was involved in three charitable initiatives. Firstly, the executive collaborated with the street lamp ministries to feed the vagrant and homeless during the Christmas period. Our members assisted in the preparation and distribution of food and also gave the vagrant and homeless hampers after they were fed. Secondly, this executive collaborated with a non-profit organization in planning a celebrity cricket match to raise funds for the repair of the Chandler School's roof. The executive was tasked with selling a significant portion of the tickets for the event. I am happy to report that we attained our target of funds and we handed over the monies to the NGO to assist with the repairs of the Chandler School's roof. The third charitable initiative this executive was involved in, it was personally created by persons within the executive. It was developed and executed, and the name of it was called Level Up. This initiative was implemented at the Sterling Children's Home. It consisted of five one-hour sessions spread over a five-week period. The sessions focused on finance and money management, deportment and outward appearance, the mindset for success, volunteerism and leadership, as well as nutrition. Each session was conducted by a specialist in the area of discussion. I am happy to report that the young ladies of Sterling Children's Home had a fantastic time during that five week period. Finally, finally, the executive reviewed the structure of the League of Young Socialists to see how we could build a more modern, attractive and robust institution that can serve stimulate, activate, and service the BLP in, the increasing, in increasing the capacity and generating higher levels of involvement by our young people. So in this vein, the executive had commenced the decentralization process of the LAS to ensure greater involvement from all of our branches. As part of the decentralization process, this executive has, exp has been expanded to include an LAS representative for each of the five zones of the party, as well as a representative from the Women's League and the Junior League. 
It is envisioned that this decentralization process, albeit a work in progress, will create wider participation with the LYS so that it will enable the League to benefit from the scores of young people who do not actively participate in the central party, but are quite active within their individual communities. The decentralization process is, an, uh, is ongoing, and I anticipate that the executive for the period of 2019 to, 2020, to, to 2020 is quite eager to ensure that they carry out this project to fruition. Comrades, I look forward to working with the new executive of the LAS for the period 2019 to 2020, and I would like to extend my best wishes to all of you on a successful 81st annual conference. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, give him another round of applause, please. Yeah. We have an incoming, this is his last year, we have an incoming chairman, Kevon Henry, I think he's here. Could you also stand so the people know who you are? He will be the new chairman of the League of Young Socialists. Could I also have someone to move? Comrade Kevon Henry moves. And a seconder, they have two over there already. I have Comrade Kiel Troutman as seconder. Sorry, Errol, you'll do the next one, Errol. Please record for the minutes, please. We now move on to the U.S. branch, Comrade Sam Clark, Samuel Clark. You here? Please. Come and pre you ready to read your report on behalf of the U.S. branch. Give him a round of applause all the way from over in a way. Bridge strong, strong. New York. The Bubba's Little Party, on behalf of the branch, our better life for our people, we go by that name in New York, our better life for our people, our motto, and we use it for various stuff, and that's what we intend to do, and make a better life for our people. This year has been challenging. As you know, when you're out in the wilderness, no one is there with you. But as soon as you come into the pasture, the green pastures, everybody is with you. My theory is if you weren't with me in the morning, Lord, you can't be with me any night. And we had our challenges like every other child's group, but we had some Trojan horses who came to sow a seeds of discord. But however, there's a God above and we were able to fight off those devils and demons, all right? But New York is struggling. We have, we start to grow. Uh, we have a membership role about close to 107, but as you know, as members, only a few always come to do the work, but everybody take the credit. But we are strong, and we continue to move in that direction, and will always be part of the better life for our people, as in New York, as well as here in Barbados. But I'm telling you, we are getting feedback on the ground. Here... And people are calling, if they're calling from New York, from Barbados to New York, they say, hey, I saw man, what are you old people doing? We are invested in the people of Barbados. And we will do anything for Barbados. Now, this is a message to all MPs, every person here in this, on this in our auditorium, that you cannot leave the people out there. You've got to return their phone calls, as the chairman just said. You have to go there and knock, because you went knocking for the vote. You gotta keep knocking again. You went knocking for the vote, so we gotta keep them, and we gotta keep those dams in purgatory. We don't wanna see them again for the next 50 years. All the Honorable Mia Moore Mortley, that has brought this nation back from, the, from like a phoenix. And we don't intend to go back there every time, one time, two times, three times, as they say. Every time Bob is in trouble, this calls for the Bob is Labor Party for recovery. The 911 call always called BLP. BLP, BLP. So we continue to grow. But I want to give some shout outs to my, my team in New York uh, the chairman, Sam Clark, uh, Jerry Corbin, the vice chair, Mike Daniels, our treasurer, Diane Juke, our secretary, and, and we have our chairman of our fundraising committee standing here, 
A legacy of his Eurelene husbands, the late Eurelene husband from St. James North now. Back in the day, she was a stalwart over there. Her daughter, Beverly. Will you stand, Beverly? Don't be bashful. Stand up. This is it. And let me tell you what she's been doing. We didn't go to the gathering to start to send things and do things for the neighborhood. She did it on her own. And with, in collaboration with us too. But that is what we all want to do, to bring things back here and to live and to bring a connection, a, a partnership between the branches which we're going to be pressuring this time. So we want people to adopt a branch. So last time we asked this call, when you return call, nobody answered. Right? So you can only help those who help themselves. So we plan to come down here every month in 2020. And we intend to make sure it's not only Beijing, the Beijing's who love uh, friends of Bobby, but to bring other tourist package, a cultural package. And a shout out to Archie Miller from Christ Church. He said to tell you all, Christ Church, that come October, it's going to be Archie Miller and the King Tuck Riddens coming down. So don't blink, Archie. Rum Chuck Hampton coming down. No. Barbados, we know it's, we got some hard times sometimes. But, you know, weeping may come in the night, but joy cometh in the morning. We wept for all through those Democratic Labour Party years, and joy is coming in the morning. All right. And on that, I'm going to let you go. But we look forward to working with you. We will be back. We will be staying focused on the ground and whatever we can do. And I want to welcome Maki Holder, our Council General. I don't know if he's here. Maki. Maki Holder. Yeah. A lot of visions that we're going to do. And we're looking forward for the partnership, for the gathering, for different schools, adopting schools, adopting different areas based upon what. You, it got to be organic. It got to come from you, from who run those constituencies. Tell us what you want and what we will, can help you with. We'll be there. All right? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you again. Give him another round of applause. That was some excitement. I must tell the party body here that there is a, an exhibition being held right now at the Steel Shed. It's called In the Eyes of the Speaker. The former speaker has an art exhibition over in the Steel Shed. All the proceeds will go to the Barbados Civil Party, so you're encouraged to go over there and view the work and to make a purchase, if you can. Now, please give a round of applause to Comrade Vincent Booners as he makes his report for the UK. Oh, before you do that, sorry, I need to, want to move. I need to move. As someone will take the report, please. Can I ask someone to move the state your name and full name? Oh, Evadni. Uh, Evadni Turney, well known from the city. Can I have a seconder, please? State your full name as well, for the record. Monica Burnett. Hendricks. Monica Burnett Hendricks. Thank you very much. So moved. We now move to the UK branch. Conrad Boo, please come on to the stage. Conrad Vincent Boo Nurse, please give him a round, round, round of applause. Good morning, conference. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, comrades. I am here to announce that rumors of the death of the UK branch are slightly exaggerated. I am here today as living, if not active, proof. <laughs> Over the years, the last year particularly, the advancing years and illnesses of our membership has made it difficult to maintain momentum. But we are gradually overcoming such matters. Those of us who are able are holding the fort 
as we keep the ship afloat in anticipation of a rise in membership through recruitment in the second generation of Barbadians area, so to speak. We have met a few times this year and are currently preparing for an annual dinner and dance to celebrate our independence. This, I can assure you, will be successful and should be to the financial benefit of the party. I have acquired a reasonable donation from Estate St. George, Sachi Corps, and this would help largely to underwrite the expenses of that event. This is unheard of that an overseas branch or perhaps a local branch, I don't know, can acquire or indeed has acquired sponsorship of a sizable sum through the hard work of the membership. Conference, does that sound like an inactive branch to you? The UK branch has solidly supported our home or mother party over 25 years. We have done more than anyone could have asked and to cast aspersions on the validity of the branch at this stage is nothing short of ridiculous. We will continue to support the party in the foreseeable future, and you can count on that. Thank you.